Hello, everybody. Welcome to Flying Friday. We're at Nanki Shiorama Airport aboard our Embraer EMB 120 Brasilia. It's, uh, it's going to be our, our plane to fly to Kagoshima. I think. I think. <laughs> uh, this one, I did do a review of this one, this plane. This does have the interior of the stock King Air. So if you don't like that, sorry. It's sort of the way it's going to roll today. Uh, what do we need to do? We need lights. Nope, not that. Not that either. Uh, I do need that, but we'll put that over there for right now. Uh, no. Auto feather is off. I do need to fix that. What's this? Is this auto feather? No. I want to turn my pro prop sink switch. Pop shrink switch. <laughs> uh, wow. You're not going to give me nothing, are you? Where is my... There it is. Uh, auto feather armed. Uh, we're going to go ahead and turn on anti-icing. See, nav lights on. Which is apparently interior cabin lights. Strobes on. Cool. All right, let's uh, let's get started. It is Flying Friday again. So you got the little Brasilia, which is going to run pretty fast. Um, that's a fuel pump. Let's not hit the fuel. That wouldn't really go well with our whole try not to die thing. Okay. Doesn't work that way. All right, fine. Give me a pushback. <laughs> Somebody help me. I need help. All right, that's enough of a pushback. There we go. We should clear. Yep. <laughs> uh, how do I get back on the runway? This way. This plane doesn't ground handle very well. <laughs> we'll say that much. And I don't really like this uh, cockpit <laughs> at all. Nobody coming? Nope. Nobody coming. Put our flaps down. Taxi down to the end of the runway, turn around and come back. All right. Now, it is about 275 nautical miles between um, these two locations. We are going to the very south of Japan. Uh, Kagoshima is uh, on the one of the more southern islands. I think it's one of the most southern islands of mainland Japan, obviously excluding Okinawa. So well, that'll be, I think, our last stop. I, uh, I want to say that after this, we're going to Shanghai. But I honestly don't remember. Yes, based on my notes that I have scrawled over here, because I went and looked up my uh, my destinations and all that, uh, we are going to go to Kagoshima, and then from Kagoshima, we'll go to Shanghai, and then from Shanghai, we'll go into Amway or Zaiman, which is what it's known as today. It was originally Amway. So that will that will take us to the end of the month, I believe. And we'll be in uh, we'll be in China. We won't be in China very long because again, at this stage, the Douglas World Cruisers all were running their floats. So we're gonna be tracing the coast of China down into Indochina, which is now Vietnam. Let's go to the skies. There it comes. It's like I was wondering where the heck my uh, engine power was for a second. Engines look good. Props are running good. All right. Should be. There we go. Flying a Skybridge livery because I felt like it. Whoa. Uh oh. Hold on. Problems. 
There we go. <laughs> we almost died on takeoff there. We almost died on takeoff. That would have been that would have been very sad. It would have been a sad ending to our flight. <laughs> a world's shortest flight. Now we do have autopilot, so I'm probably gonna run some autopilot on this thing, because it just makes my life so much easier to run autopilot. So let's start playing with autopilot a little bit. Uh Altitude, I'm looking for 10, whoops, 10, 6 is what I was, is what I put in my flight plan. 10, 6. Um, we need to track the heading bug over to, actually, flip the GPS mode. That's the smarter thing to do. Now, if I say autopilot, uh, da, 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 will you behave yourself? Am I already at 12,000? No, I'm not. What are you doing, plane? You should be climbing. Okay, there we go. Now we're climbing. Wait, nav. That's what I want. Yes! Yes, it is. Okay. Very good. I have to control airspeed myself. But that's all right. Let's turn off pop, prop sync. Pop sync. It's pop sync. It's what you do when you lip sync to pop music. It's pop sync. True. It's a true story there. It is a beautiful, beautiful day. I've noticed our light is not on the wing, but that's all right. I'm just going to ignore this fact. <laughs> Beautiful day as we climb up towards 10,000 feet. Welcome aboard Skybridge service from Shirahama to Kagoshima. It's a short flight today. Relatively short flight today. So we're gonna we're gonna trace the coast here. Let me pull this over here somewhere. We're gonna trace the coast. We're gonna hit the GBE intersection, at which point we make a hard left for port. And once we do that, we'll pick up the SUC intersection and then we're heading down there to RJFK, which is our destination on the far south of the island. It's not gonna to be too bad. We're clocking 176 knots of ground speed right now. That will increase when we hit our altitude of course, because then we're not burning off airspeed for altitude. We got a little bit of a climb left. And we're well within the uh, operating parameters of this aircraft. While we're, while we're flying out of Shirahama, I wanted to actually talk about Shirahama because I didn't talk about it last time when I flew to Shirahama because I hadn't looked it up because I was a gibbon. Uh, Shirahama is in the... I'm gonna so butcher this. I'm sorry if you can pronounce Japanese better than I can. Uh, it's in the Nishimoro district of the Wakayama prefecture. It's a resort town, which kind of makes sense when we flew into it. It looked sort of like up on bluffs and stuff. I mean, it has white sand beaches, and I read somewhere that they actually import that sand from Australia. And I was like, why would you import white sand? And then I thought about it. I'm like, oh, because everybody likes the idea of white sand beaches. And there's also hot springs there. Which don't really, uh, that's not such a big deal to me. But the whole concept of white sand beaches, I don't get it. I have to say, I just don't get it. Let's go to this view, because I like this view. Um, I don't get the idea of white sand beaches. And the reason I don't get it is I've been to a lot of beaches. Okay, not that many beaches. I've been to a good number of beaches. And I will say my favorite beach, bar none, was a black sand beach on the Big Island of Hawaii. That was amazing. Uh, the green sand beach, we couldn't quite get to, but the whole idea of a green sand beach is, like, amazing. <laughs> the whole white sand beach thing, it's just like, I don't know. It's so overdone. 
That's just my thought on white sand beaches. You can have other thoughts on white sand beaches, but I just think it's overdone. If they truly import the white sand beaches, white sand for the white sand beaches from Australia, Australia, why are you giving up your white sand? I mean, granted, you have a lot of sand because you have a whole desert in the middle of your country, but I'm presuming that's not where they're getting the sand from. My presumption is they're getting the sand from someplace else, like your own beaches. But that's just my thought. Okay, enough about white sand beaches and my thoughts on beaching in general. Uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like we're leveling off. Good. Then we should get some more altitude. We're about to make a hard turn to the left here. Look at that beauty. Look at the beautiful inlet with all the towns down there. It's always amazing to me, <coughs> speaking as an American, we learn that <coughs> Europe is very crowded and, uh, and Asia is very crowded. Now, speaking as a Luxembourger, I know that's bunk in Europe. And having been to Europe a good bit, I know that's bunk. I don't know about Asia personally, but I know about Asia through people that have been there. And I know that's not true as well. There's a lot of non-developed areas. You might be a short walk from development, but there's a lot of open open space that we don't think of as Americans we think it's all like overcrowded big thing that you you get when you're in uh, when you're an American you first go to Europe is wow there's all this open space well duh because everyone lives in cities and the cities are not huge other than London which London London just needs to go away it's just too big I like my, my little Embra Air. There was a crash of an Embra Air that was, uh, it was quite catastrophic. It, people thought it was a bomb because the plane actually blew up in air. It didn't really blow up in terms of blowing up, but it self-destructed in air. Um, all the all the passengers and crew actually uh, blacked out before they died, which is probably for the best. But it all was because the um, anti-icing boot on the tail ripped off and it forced the plane into a dot into a high speed dive and uh that sudden jolt knocked out most of the people and and then the the tail ripped off and then the wings ripped off and she just became a yeah it wasn't good it wasn't good but it's all, all because somebody didn't bother to fill out the right paperwork Can you believe that get in our plane make sure that we're not going to overspeed our plane oh pff, not by far in fact i'll give her a little bit more fuel i do need to roll back those props slightly i want to get them off the No? No, I can't roll back the props. Why can't I? Woo. There. That's what I want. There. <clears throat> she, should, she should run a little bit nice. Nice and smooth. Alright, since we have autopilot, we're going to go ahead and uh, bump our simulation rate up to double speed. making 245 knots at ground speed right now got about five minutes to the Kaifu intersection yes my auto feathers are on I was like what are those lights oh wait those are my auto feathers no uh -oh, those are supposed to be on oh okay now this plane was a, is is an extremely fast commuter turboprop um, in terms of, I mean, look at the barber pole on this thing. The barber pole is all the way up there in the 260 knot range. I mean, that's that's quite a barber pole for for a commuter turboprop. We're not getting anywhere near that. I think we got some sort of headwind going on. No, we got a tailwind. You just don't have the speed to push the barber pole. If I climbed, I'd probably get it, but I'm going to let it roll here. 
245 knots is is more than more than adequate for what we're doing. And the sun is rising. Oop. Somewhere over there. It's dawn. There it is. Daylight is breaking. That's a pretty picture. Ah, oh, pretty picture. Oh, the co-pilot just looked at us. Hey, what's up? Oh, looked away. Jerk. <laughs> cool. Uh, while we're loping along here, Kagoshima, that is our destination, Kagoshima. It's the capital of the Kagoshima Prefecture. It's called the Naples of the Eastern World because it's located in a bay, or on a bay, not in the bay. I mean, you can't be in the bay unless you're a boat. Uh, it's got a hot climate for the area. And uh, it's got a stratovolcano that, that towers over it, much like Naples. Now, the bay that Kagoshima is actually in, it is, it is not a bay like we think of as a bay. I mean, when we think of a bay, we think of like, I don't know, a bay. Just an inlet in, in the, uh, just a standard inlet that's been eroded through time or whatever. But this is actually a caldera. So it's actually the dead um, crater of a volcano that's collapsed in upon itself and filled with water, or in this case, the ocean. And that is where, what the bay is created from. It's actually from the caldera of a long dead volcano, which is probably the, the base structure of the stratovolcano that is sitting over Kagoshima. Pretty cool. Um, Kagoshima is also where the British shelled Japan in retaliation for killing some guy. I, it was a old, long time ago. I read it and was like, oh, typical behavior of the European powers during that early time of the 1700s, 1800s. Typical. It's typical of all the, the Euro cultures of that time period. That's all I really wrote down about Kagoshima. There was a lot more, but I, I didn't. Yeah. What, what do you know? Well, we are on our way to the our Yoma intersection. And we're about to, to jump off the Ryoma intersection because it was a very short flight between <laughs> Kaifu and Ryoma. And then we'll be on to the SUC intersection. That will be our, I think that's our long jump of the flight. 84 nautical miles to SUC. Let's see, flight plan. Yeah, not by much. From SUC, we're going to head to Phoenix, and that's an 80 nautical mile jump. And then Jingu, which is uh, 31 nautical miles past Phoenix. And then we end up going into RJFK. Cool beans. Cool beans. I wanted to fly this plane, even though it's it's not got the best cockpit. In fact, I don't even like sitting in the cockpit very long. Uh, but I think I said it when I did the spotlight of this plane. This is one of those great planes for a first mod. Because you get a new plane, but you get a cockpit you're familiar with. So for a lot of people, that's a good thing. I have now flown so many add-on aircraft. I don't even know what a normal cockpit looks like anymore. I mean, I do, because I knew that this one was out of the King Air, but... Wouldn't it be cool to, uh... There's my mouse. There's my mouse. Wouldn't it be cool to have, like, a house, like, right there on the tip right there? That would be so cool. Well, hmm. Tell a typhoon came. Then it wouldn't be cool anymore. Then it would really be... I'd like to be on the back side of it. Ooh, maybe, maybe a house built into that. They have that, you know. Houses built into, yeah. If you go to Charleston, South Carolina, they actually are built into um, what uh, these hills that were that are part of uh, that were used for storage of, of stuff um, that built houses into the hills. Uh, they, they were actually hurricane proof. Which makes sense because they're built into the hill. 
I think I also saw them when I was at Normandy that I don't remember. I was kind of concentrating under, on other things when I was at Normandy. I was kind of like concentrating on the whole like D-Day thing. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful day. I'm actually kind of surprised by this. Not very many, um, not many, very many airports along here. Again, Douglas Road Cruiser, they would have been flying about half this height. And, uh, wow, more than, uh, less than half the speed. I mean, they'd be going 100, 100 knots. We're going 245. They probably would have been hugging the coast a little bit more than we are. I would presume. Though even at 5,000 on a clear day, they would have been able to see the coast. So they might have been able to take a bearing from one point to another. So they might have taken a, been able to fly up to that point right there, that sandy point, and then been able to take a direct bearing on that point over there and flown that route. One does not know. One could probably find out if one looked far enough. Or hard enough. How are we doing in here? Everything looks good in here. Fuel flow is good. Fuel is good. Gotta have to look on the side there to see the fuel, but fuel is good. Alright. Just lope along. Not bad. Now I have been thinking, I have been thinking about trying to start jumping landing points. So for instance, uh, Shirahama to Kagoshima to Shanghai. I have been thinking flying Shirahama to Shanghai direct and just pointing out that they stopped at Kagoshima. Now this works better when we get into flying into larger cities because then I can I can fly larger aircraft. I'm not 100% sure that this Ember Air would have been able to handle uh, Shirahama to Shanghai easily. I think it can. I don't think that's a big problem. But I've been thinking, you know, I haven't looked at what comes after Amoy or Zaymen because the plan is to land there, but I've been wondering if maybe I shouldn't jump and land at every other airport. It'll get us around the world faster. It will mean I have to fly different aircraft. So I've been flying a lot of stuff like Corsairs, um, the EMB-120, aircraft with relatively short ranges. I'd have to start looking at some larger aircraft and some faster aircraft, and I, it would be required that they have autopilot because I'd have to turn autopilot on and turn the the time multiplier up a good bit to get this to fit into a a decent length. So you guys tell me what you think about that. Whether you think that I should uh, look at skipping cities as I fly around, I don't know. I really don't. I'm going to look up more about Kagoshima while we're hanging out, because I can. Kagoshima, Japan. It does look like a beautiful city, by the way. From what, what I, the pictures I'm looking at right now, it looks like a beautiful city. Of course, FSX will not make it look beautiful. But that's FSX, right? Um, let's see. It's 40 minutes from Kagoshima Airport, so we're actually not even going to be in the city itself, actually. We're going to be 40 minutes outside of Kagoshima, which means who knows where we're landing. 
apparently they have Satsuma Province Regional Cuisine. Uh, kibi. Or Kibi? No, it'd be Kibi. A kind of tiny fish. Tonkatsu, which is caramelized pork. Sounds good. Caramelized pork. Mm. As opposed to the breaded version encountered elsewhere in Japan. All right. Smoked eel and karokan, which are sweet cakes made from steamed yams and rice flour. That's that's interesting. Um, St. Xavier Church is, the, is uh, a reminder of the first Christians that came to Japan. Well, that's pretty cool. That is pretty darn cool. Looks like kind of a place that I would go to hang out for a day or two. 1914, the mountain erupted. Uh, it, the mountain, by the way, is Sakurajima. That's, that's cool. Erupted in 1914. Ah. Bombarded by the British Royal Navy in 1863 to punish the Daimoryo of Satsuma for the murder of Charles Lennox Richardson on the Tokaido Highway the previous year and its refusal to pay indemnity and compensation. That's according to Wikipedia. It's interesting. It's also the birthplace of Togo... Hayatiro, who studied naval studies in England and was chief admiral of the Grand Fleet of the Imperial Japanese Navy during the Russo-Japanese War, made him a legend in Japanese military history. Cool. And it was bombed by the United States, the 314th Bombardment Wing, with 120 B-29s. They dropped 809.6 tons of incendiary and cluster bombs. Destroyed 44.1% of the city. Well, there you go. There you go. Now you know more. And as they say, the more you know. <laughs> that, was, that was an awesome campaign, actually. cruising man we're cruising where are we we're three nautical miles from suc so suc is actually a radio intersection down there so then we have 80 more nautical miles to phoenix and we're making our turn towards phoenix right now i'll take us about 19 minutes in real time which is about uh 10 minutes or so in double time and then after Phoenix, we have Jingu, which is a short little hopper. Uh, Jingu is 31 nautical miles, and then 18 nautical miles from Jingu to uh, Kagoshima Airport. And then we have to think about landing this aircraft. I don't think it's going to be difficult to land this aircraft. I really don't. I mean, as is my thought here. It's a... Uh, twin engine turboprop and I managed to land it during the spotlight despite having a terrible approach. What might be a good idea, might be a good idea, is actually to look up KJFK or R, not K, RJFK. Nope, oh, nope, nope, R. Oops, J. F. K, Kagoshima. Nope, 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 enter, enter. There we go. All right, let's pull this over here. So we're looking at an asphalt surface, uh, 9,000, well, 10,000 feet. 16 and 34 is my radials. That's going to be easy enough. Uh, let's see, we have an ILS slope to 34. That's going to be 111.7, so we might want to think... I'll think about putting 111.7 into the nav radio. Yeah. Let's think about that, because 34 is... 
probably the 111.70 is what we're going to approach at. All right. 34. Yeah, that would make sense, actually. So, which one of these suckers is nav? Here it is, right here. Aha! Uh -huh. Nav. Oop, nope, I do want that. And there. Good. I hope. Nav, nav, ADF, ATC, nav 2. Okay, yeah, we're good. So 111.70, that we've got that set. So we might pick up an ILS slope. I probably can just do it visually. <laughs> yeah, because those always go perfectly. Don't they? They do. They totally do. I've flown on one of these. Well, uh, several of these, actually. They're neat little aircraft. I've flown on more beach, though. The beach uh, 1900s. Flown on more of those. From Toronto to Kingston, Ontario. And Toronto to Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. The Sobs, I flew from Detroit to Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. Don't ask what I was doing there. It was it was bad winter. <laughs> uh, if it was winter, I was deployed to Canada. That's how it worked. <laughs> right. So after Kagoshima, we're heading for Shanghai. I kind of find it interesting that they didn't touch the Korean Peninsula, but then you think about it and there's no point in them touching the Korean Peninsula, is there? This probably would have been the more difficult part of the trip. Well, maybe not. Um, Kagoshima to Shanghai we would have been out over the South China Sea. South China Sea? I don't remember now. <laughs> you would have been out over the oceans anyway, because they wouldn't have followed land nearly as much. There are probably a good number of islands, though, so they probably were okay. And then they'd be back on the old uh, follow the coast behaviors. Cool. I don't like the guy looking at us, but if I can ignore that, I like this view. It's a very nice view. We'll fly in cockpit a little bit. Cool. Uh, we are 38 nautical miles from our intersection. All right, so I think proper landing. When I hit Jingu, I'm gonna have to veer off towards don't know what that intersection is. What is that radio? You're not going to tell me. All right, fine. That's because it's 100 nautical miles out. That's why. How are you doing back there? Wouldn't know. Wow. Default FSX textures, folks. Default FSX textures. Yeah. <laughs> hey, DevTales promised to make it a better game, so let's hope they do it. I'd love to see a, a new flight simulator come out <coughs> running in modern hardware, actually making use of the GPU. That's a crazy thing. FSX is so old, it doesn't do a lot of on GPU rendering. Most of the graphics are actually done off the CPU and because it's as old as it is, it doesn't handle the multi-threading and hyper-threading of the new processors very well either. It doesn't like multi-core processors a whole lot. And it still uses DirectX 9 in most of its implementations. You can do DirectX 10, but it breaks some things. It's like, holy cow. <laughs> holy cow. 
it runs 32 bit. It's it's just it's old. But the modding community and the add-on community has kept this thing alive. It's kind of like a slap in the face to all these companies that lock out the modding community. It's like, um, people still buy FSX because there's so many add-ons out there. I have a blue line and a red line on my speedometer. My airspeed. One is about 90 knots and one is at 100. 20-ish knots, 125. I'm going to bet that I'm going to want to land between the red and the blue. That's my bet. Makes the most sense, doesn't it? Huh. Yeah, we'll try it. I mean, what, what's the worst that can happen, right? We crash, we die, we lose a second plane. Or we lost our first plane when we did a really poor job of landing that A300 in Alaska. I thought I had it. Up until the very last second, but we had way too much uh, vertical speed. I think I slapped her down at 1,500 feet per minute. Just busted her up. It was unfortunate. Why you not work, switches? I wish I wish all the things would work, all the twiddling. Somebody, who was it? It was Iris, I think. They they made a plane. It might not have been Iris. It might have been A two A. Can't remember. They made a plane that, <coughs> when you have radials like this. You know, today, we, if you look at any of the add-on planes, a lot of times you're clicking multiple times to, to plus the radial. Well, they did it so that what you do is you click once, and then you'd use your mouse wheel to flick the radial. I thought that was amazing when I saw that. I was like, that is, that is everything that you want right there, because... In reality, you'd be able to flick a radio button really quickly to tune to what you want it to tune to. The fact that you used to have to tap multiple times was just annoying. But I thought, you know, that was really that was really innovative. And the fact that we consider that innovative was I was kind of like, wow, that's sort of sort of sad. Sort of sad. All right, we're heading towards Jingu right now. You can see down there at the uh, the my nav bar down there that we're 27 point well 27 dead to Jingu. All right, 34 is our approach into RJFK. All right, so I should probably go. All right, so when we hit Jingu, I'm going to take over for the autopilot. <laughs> hmm. Go out and come back. That's my plan right now. I don't know if that's actually going to work. But we're going to try it. Oh, look at the beautiful mountains. There's an airport down below us somewhere there or not I think it's actually right underneath us somewhere Woo! okay not, not too much plane does not like that there it is we just passed it some mountains there there's the strato volcano there it is right there so there's the strato volcano. This would be the caldera right there that collapsed. And its collapse allowed the seawater to come in. And then this came out. So this used to be probably one big caldera. 
and it when it collapsed and then that built itself back out now in theory this thing could keep growing and it would eventually cut off the uh, bay from the ocean in theory oops I didn't want oh clicky clicky I'm trying to, to turn with my mouse and it doesn't work like that yeah, I bet you the Japanese government has a plan in place in the case that the uh, the mountain grows larger it looks like according to FSX it's cut off there but it's open there so I wonder if there's a plan to ah, who knows who knows? I don't. It's probably better that way. In fact, I know for a fact it's better that way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alright, 6.2 nautical miles. Alright, we're good. We're good, man! We're good! Ah, I see what I was hoping for. So there is a, let me pull this over here. So here we have KBE. So what I'm going to do off Jengu, I'm going to actually aim for KBE myself. So that's about a 2-3-0. And then I can go off KBE to RJFK. So I want to move this guy around to 2-3-0. Or thereabouts. Close enough. Now I'm going to flip our nav over to... Nope, heading. Thank you. That's what I want. I also want to take our simulation speed to normal. And get rid of our menu bar. Alright, I need to move this some more. To two... Or thereabouts. Let's go right about there. And we're going to want to start descent. We're going to aim for 6,000 right now. Bring those engines back. There we go. Perfect. Actually, probably gonna want to aim for a little bit lower than that. Let's aim for five. I want to slower even more. Actually, we're at 240 knots. Okay, good. Now we're dropping. I'm gonna aim for an indicated airspeed of about 170, which is at the bottom of my airspeed. But I probably won't hit that. It's okay though if I don't, in my opinion. thing I do want to do is I want to bring up this, make sure our props are all the way up, make sure that's all the way up, good. We want to be as prepped as possible for go-round procedures. No mountains in the area, so go-round is going to be going straight out, and then probably, I think I'm, my go-round procedure is going to be out and go left. Yeah, because there's a mountain range behind us, and that's to the right. So I think my go-around procedure is going to be out to the left. Okay. I have to take over full control of this aircraft soon enough here. But I think we might hit 5,000 before then, which is good. Gets us nice and low. Actually, don't know the altitude of the airport. Oh, there's a plane out there. 737-800. Is he going up or down? Oh, crap. He's going in for landing. 
I think he's trying to land at the same airport. Oh, crap. Because we have to line up behind him. Okay. I think we can do that. Let's, uh... There's the airport. I just want to listen in to Kagoshima here. We're just going to listen in to Kagoshima. I'm not actually going to talk to them because they're gibbons and they give really bad directions. Okay, he's at 3,000 going through that transition area. I probably need to think about 3,000, but I'm not going to worry about it quite yet. Now, the advantage being... We're slow, and 737 is not. All right, I gotta find him. Where is he? Where'd he go? Okay, that's him. There he is, right there. So he's at... 3,000 there, okay. Oh, let's give this airplane some power. I'm going to drop her down. 3,500. All right, I'm going to bring her around to 3, 4... Three, four. I'll let the I'll let autopilot bring us around here because I'm going to want to fly nice and slow and we're waiting to hear him clear the runway. Bring him back into view, and then I'll be able to actually uh, see where he is. There's a runway, too. Nice. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and get ready to... Drop altitude, flight director. There we go. We have control. My goal is to be slow to allow him to get down. He's at 1,700 feet. Probably going to have to do a few S-turns to just kind of let him loiter. Kind of reminiscent of a similar experience I had somewhere else. Where was that? That was somewhere in Alaska where I scared the crap out of some poor guy flying a Mooney, I think. turn a little bit more. Come on, buddy. You got to get that plane down. 1,200 feet. All right. I'm going to ask for some flap. Thousand feet. All right. He's going to be down here in a moment. But then he has to get with his stopping program, and I don't know what that airport looks like. So let's just do a loop here. We're just going to do one full turn. We're going to go back out. Okay, he's down. That's good. So we're going to kind of swing back towards KBE. Should be able to make a nice circle here. Okay, he's out. Good. So we can make a swing around. We can go in. See, I don't always force it. Shanghai, I'm probably going to go ILS just because 
We're talking about a major airport, and I have the amount of traffic cranked up a good bit. And I've had issues before where I go VFR and try to land at LA, and I cannot get the aircraft slotted between the inbound aircraft. So we'll probably do ILS into uh, Shanghai. On the bright side, if a 737 is landing here at Kagoshima, that should mean that I can get a pretty decent bird off on the way to uh, Shanghai. Where are you at, runway? Should be coming around. There she is. Okay, I'm getting rid of flaps because I'd rather have a little bit of speed right now. All right, here we go. Making for the runway. All right, let's go ahead and put those flaps back out so that we can actually see what we're doing a little bit. This looks like a pretty decent airport. I would expect to. I mean, it's the capital of an entire prefecture, but at the same time, Cheyenne, Wyoming is the capital of the state of Wyoming, and that airport is um, microscopic. Actually, it's not because it's also a military base, but whatever, whatevs, whatevs. All right. We are lining up on the runway, but we are high according to the ILS slope. Let's try to correct that problem. And the lights at the end, saying the same thing. All right, there we go. Now we're getting it. Gears out. Bring the engine up a little bit. Get our descent rate under control here. I think that's under control. A little bit faster than that. Nope, I don't really want you to climb, plane. I want you to continue descending. Thank you. There we go. Nice and easy. We have plenty of runway. Yeah, we're going to be fine. Look at that. How beautiful that is. Hey, look, you can see my shadow. Hey, look, it's a shadow. High. Okay, well, I have, I have like a million miles of runway. I'm okay if I'm a little bit high. Perfect. Get with the stopping program. There. Booyah. Pull those flaps up, and we're good to go. We can even exit on this first little bit here. Excellente. We've made it to Kagoshima from Shirahama. We didn't cause an international incident by causing problems for that 737. 
I'm now going to go park over here between these two planes. Why am I going so fast? Because I can. I'm not even going to park properly. I'm just going to park here because I feel like it. There. We shall stop here. Open up our door. And there we go. We made it. Woo! We made it another flight. Shirahima to Kago Shirahama to Kagoshima, Japan, in our Ember Air EMB 120 Brasilia. And our Douglas World Cruise Around the World flight next stop, Shanghai. Until then, I've been Derek Tubbers. Happy Flying Friday, everybody.